a study that is really the main study that we have data from looking at capmatinib. It is a study that uh, initially looked at patients who had amplification of the MET gene and then subsequently looked at patients who had uh, Medexon 14 skipping. Uh, those studies uh, showed that the drug was uh, generally well tolerated. I think the most uh, sort of common unique toxicity is there is some uh, swelling that is seen uh, generally lower extremity and, and has generally been seen in class in uh, patients receiving MET inhibitors. Uh, so the, the study to date shows a uh, response rate uh, that's around 40% in patients who have received prior therapy and a response rate that is much higher than that in patients who have not received prior therapy for metastatic non-small cell lung cancer. Um, those are the data that uh, were presented at ASCO in 2019. Um, this did lead to a breakthrough designation for capmatinib, um, and uh, more recently capmatinib has been granted uh, priority review by the U.S. Uh, FDA. Capmatinib is an oral small molecule inhibitor that is extremely potent against uh, MET. It is uh, quite specific for MET without uh, tremendous uh, activity against other tyrosine kinase inhibitors, which in general um, is something that is looked at as important for limiting the toxicity uh, associated with a therapy. So um, in general, it is a potent oral uh, therapy directed uh, quite specifically against MET. The geometry mono study was uh, the basis of uh, the recent FDA priority review for uh, capmatinib um, and the prior breakthrough status. This uh, study is in some ways a, a bit of a complicated study because there are many different cohorts. First, there were cohorts that were looking at the role of gene amplification. So um, there was, for instance, a cohort that uh, had a gene copy number between two and four, which is, would not be highly amplified. Um, you know, one that looked at uh, four to six, and then uh, one that looked at higher numbers that actually split into two groups, uh, gene copy number six to 10 versus 10 to, uh, to, to sort of the, whatever the, the top number would be. Um, so that was a major part of the study, but then there were a few cohorts that were specific for patients with MET exon uh, 14 skipping. Uh, those cohorts were broken down into cohorts that are looking at patients who um, have received prior therapy, generally chemotherapy, directed against their, uh, their metastatic disease, um, whereas there is a smaller group that is uh, has looked at patients who have not received prior therapy. In total, um, it was nearly 100 patients that were treated with capmatinib. Uh, the toxicity profile was generally uh, favorable with uh, the most common sort of unique toxicity being edema, uh, which generally has been uh, sort of a class effect of MET inhibitors. Um, and the response rate was around 40% for patients who had uh, received prior therapy um, and considerably higher um, in the two-thirds range for patients who had not received prior therapy uh, for their metastatic disease. The duration of response data that we have to date is um, encouraging but immature. It is uh, it, it differs a little bit based on the previously treated versus the untreated, um, but I, is approaching a year. There's very limited uh, data on comparator drugs to capmatinib. The, uh, the one published data set that we have is a data set looking at crizotinib that was recently published in Nature Medicine um, in which uh, the investigators looked at uh, crizotinib in uh, a group of patients who were, uh, had, had medics on 14 skip, skipping uh, non-small cell lung cancer, the response rate there was around 30%. Um, I think it's, uh, these are small numbers in, in small studies. I would caution people against cross-trial comparison. It, it did appear to be clearly an active drug. Um, and uh, similarly, there's uh, no 
manuscript that I'm aware of to date on uh, tapotinib, which is a, a, a similar drug uh, to capmatinib. Um, that data has also been presented at ASCO in 2019, and um, it is a, a little bit hard beyond just the, the typical caution against cross-trial comparison. It's a little hard to compare that because they looked um, at patients who were diagnosed by tissue and then separately looked at patients who were diagnosed um, by circulating tumor DNA. Um, but I would say that also looked like uh, quite impressive data that the drug clearly is active against uh, this target of Medexon 14 skipping. The approval of capmatinib for uh, non-small cell lung cancer I think would be uh, exciting. It would lead to really the sixth different genomic alteration that is uh, uh, basically a target for uh, targeted therapy. Um, one other unique issue about uh, Medexon 14 is compared to some of the other targets that um, have recently been approved or that people are looking at, um, Medexon 14 skipping is not particularly rare. Um, it is probably in the ballpark of 3 to 4 percent of non-small cell lung cancer, um, very similar in number to uh, what we see for ALK gene rearrangements. And although that also may sound small in terms of a percentage, I think what people have to remember is that there are approximately 200,000 new cases of lung cancer a year in the United States alone. And so when we're talking about 3 4% of that, we're talking about a, a, a quite significant number of patients if they can be um, identified. I think that um, when one looks at the data for uh, capmatinib, one of the concerns that always comes up, which I think is appropriate, is that although we have limited uh, data, we don't have a full, uh, I would argue, and complete understanding of what the anticipated response rates are for instance, in the second line to docetaxel-based therapy or in the first line compared to um, what now has become sort of the standard, which has typically been chemotherapy plus immunotherapy. And so um, I think that, um, that for many practitioners like myself, I think that a response rate like what has been seen with the duration of response that we have seen um, give us sort of full confidence that um, even outside of a uh, direct comparison that compared to docetaxel-based therapy when one looks at the efficacy and the toxicity profile that this would be a preferable approach. I think that in the frontline setting when we don't have as much data on particularly chemoimmunotherapy, I think individual practitioners will make the decision as to whether they want to uh, be looking at chemoimmunotherapy, for instance, as their frontline approach in these patients uh, versus capmatinib. Should there be an approval for capmatinib in previously untreated patients with uh, Medexon 14 skipping non-small cell lung cancer?